Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. We're jumping right into part five of the repairs to my awful free tri-hole boat that's back here. And as we saw in part four of the testing video, we know a little bit more about why it was free, namely that the engine does not go into forward gear and stay there. It jumps out of gear, it clunks, it clanks, something is stripped out. So we're gonna tear that lower unit off and see what's happening in there. And here I thought I was done taking this lower unit apart after I redid the water pump. I'm supposed to have all kinds of specialized gear pullers and uh, extra stuff for this, which I don't have. So we might just have to go the old uh, hit it with a hammer method that they recommend over here. I just put all this oil in here back in video one or two and I gotta take it all out again. So I think to remove the prop on this thing, I'm supposed to pop this little pin out, but it will not move. I've tried hitting it with a hammer. I've tried hitting it with a punch. It will not come out. Since I can't get the propeller off, let's see if I can just remove this entire bottom gear case from the rest of this garbage. All right, so I took off the water pump again, and I gotta get the impeller out of here again. And then I think I can lift this whole assembly up off of the lower, lower unit, or the lower gear case. All right, one of these days I'll learn to wear gloves while doing this. That's a lie. I've, I've never learned anything from this. Well, obviously I'm touching far too many things because I took this gear race out and all the bearings just took a dump all over the place. So I'm gonna be lucky if I can find all those again and get them back in here. I dropped some down in here and they went somewhere in here. So that's fantastic. So to get those roller bearings out of here, I guess I'm back to trying to get the prop off. I finally got that pin out and it is very bent. So apparently this is supposed to be some sort of shear pin, but instead of shearing, it just bent really awkwardly. So there was no way to get it out of there. So when I was hammering it before, my only problem was not using a big enough hammer. And I also destroyed these two old screwdrivers that I was using as punches, but that's okay, because these were broken already. They're just more broken now. Well, that oil in there has some nice uh, water mixed in with it, so it's probably a bad sign as well. Okay, I think we've come to the part where I pull all of this stuff out and then immediately forget what order it goes back in. Now, they also keep referring to all these special tools, but I don't have those, so I'm doing it the wrong way as usual. All right, so far I have these things out, and the things remaining in there look like this. I'm doing these videos as much for me to try and remember how this all goes back together. And there's that forward gear, and uh, those little roller bearings are my fault. I dropped them down in the top here earlier. Unfortunately, everything looks perfectly fine. There's no dings, no stripped stuff, nothing's broken, no missing teeth. Everything looks great in here, and that's a problem, because A, that means I've taken this lower unit apart for nothing, and B, I'm not going to remember how all this goes back in, and C, I haven't found the source of that clunking shift jumping thing, so yeah, I've just wasted a bunch of time to probably make a bigger problem for myself trying to reassemble this, and I still don't know why it's jumping out of gear. So I'm not totally clear on the order in which these parts go in. The manual seems to show something a little different than the way I found it, so maybe somebody installed these wrong before and that was the problem. Or maybe the manual is just garbage, which I keep assuming it is. All right, I checked YouTube and this thing does not exist on there, so that's how you know your motor's obscure. If I knew what I was doing, I could do a nice tear down and rebuild video on this, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I don't really want to show people how to do it wrong. Fortunately, I asked on the Antique Outboard Motor Club on Facebook, and a guy named Robert said that this is the correct way to do it, with the thrust washer kind of nested into that plate. So thanks, Robert. Sounds good. 
I know I have a problem when I take a break from working on my free boat to go look up other free boats. I think there's supposed to be a gasket here, but it didn't have one. So I'm going to cheat and use gasket maker and hope that's enough. Everything seems okay down in shift land down here. And this linkage all seems fine. This thing still only goes into either forward or reverse. It's like this isn't quite long enough to do both. So if you adjust it enough to do forward, it won't go reverse. If you adjust enough to go reverse, it won't go forward. So I don't quite know what's going on there. It was still doing that clunking with this all disconnected, so I don't think this is related to the main problem with the engine. So I'm kind of mystified at this point. I guess my uh, next step would be just putting it back in the water and seeing if taking it apart and putting it back together fixed the problem through some sort of magic. I've got to wait for my gasket stuff to set up, so I might as well poke at some other minor projects around this boat. I've put some silicone on all of my joints and gaps, so hopefully my leaky bolts don't leak anymore. I added this little bracket to my horn, and I'm going to see what I can do with this. And I could try to do JB Weld, but it looks like they already did that, and it didn't hold. So I'm going to try and use my steel stick plastic epoxy, which I've used on the potato gun, to kind of build up on the inside of this, as well as maybe a little bit on the outside. If you missed the video where I used this on the spud gun, it's basically like JB Weld Play-Doh. It's this two-part clay stuff that you smash together until it's blended. And then it sets up into kind of a plastic. So I'm hoping that'll add some strength to the inside of my little mount here. I've encountered possibly the worst problem with this boat so far. There is no good place to put the cup holders. Put it here, it's at a weird angle. You put it here, you bash into your legs going through. That's upholstered. That's a chair. I don't know where to put my drink holder. This is a crisis. All right, well, I'm going to put one right there for now. It's not ideal, but if you're up here in the bow, you can set your drink in that. And it does fold up so you don't bash your legs on it. You might notice that I saved the one good original tire as a spare. It's not a great spare, but I guess it's better than nothing. What's worse than nothing is this existing winch on the trailer. I have this problem with other winches too. When you crank these handles around to crank the boat up, the handle collides with the hull. So you can't actually get the boat all the way up onto the front roller where it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna replace that winch with this one that I had lying around. And this one is more of a ratcheting winch. So you can pull this arm back and click it forward without having to go around and around every time like this old style one. So this is where an old style winch would be running into the boat, but we've got this ratchet handle so we can just keep cranking until we're right there on the bow roller. I'm not going to throw this away because I don't throw things away. I'll probably just keep it as an anchor winch or something. These really are not very good handles. There's no support in the middle, so the whole thing is just really wiggly. I don't know why they did that. If you grabbed onto this to get into the boat, you'd just rip the whole thing off. I guess they're really just supposed to be decorative or something. And here I go spending money on this free boat again. I've got a bilge pump, which should help keep it from sinking. And I am going to hold off on installing that because I want to put it in the center where the hull is deepest because that's where all the water builds up. And once we rip this floor up, I'll see where I can put this bilge pump. I've also been using this as my fuel tank. It's only slightly redneck, taped together. So that's what my other package is, is a legitimate boat fuel tank. Modern gas cans come with a ridiculous, supposedly safe nozzle, which usually ends up spilling way more gas than it's supposed to. So if you go to your local hardware store, 
you can get these old style nozzles along with a little vent cap and these work great you don't spill a drop of gas those new safe ones are just a death trap I don't know why they're supposed to be safer I want to get this engine shifting reliably and that means we have to drag our barrel out again throw the engine in the barrel fill it with water for about the hundredth time and see if we can make it shift and I think I'm gonna take the prop off for this test so that I can run it in forward gear without just blasting all the water out of the barrel well it seems to be working and yeah that smoke's normal it's two cycles so it just looks like a house on fire constantly so once again it works fine in the driveway but will it work on the lake so I've got that shifter adjusted so it's got a little more positive forward pressure in the forward gear. I don't know if that's helping or not. The downside is it means I don't have reverse gear because that thing is so finicky it's just not a very good linkage. But you know what, who needs reverse? It's a boat. You only really need to go forward and not forward. So let's see what happens. Now put these fins back on for about the hundredth time. It doesn't fit in the barrel with the fins on, so I have to keep taking them off every time I have to test it. All right, so another thing that I like with my boats is gadgets. And I have this old tablet, and you can pick up a basic Android tablet for like $10 in an estate sale. So I think that's where I got this one. It's five or ten years old, so it's not the latest and greatest, but it will run some nautical charts. And... I'm going to have it set up as a chart plotter on the boat because a real GPS is expensive, but these things have GPS built in. You can show maps, you can do all kinds of stuff, and for $10, you don't care too much if it falls overboard or gets wet. So I need to make a mount for this thing so it can sit on the dashboard. I still have all this scrap aluminum, so let's see if I have enough scraps to make a little box to hold it. All right, you've seen me cut aluminum before. It's not pretty, so I'm just gonna magic this into finished product. All right, so this little bracket sits on the dashboard and the tablet slides in there. It's in there pretty securely so it shouldn't bounce out and now I just need to find a way to mount this onto the boat. This boat really has a distinct lack of places to mount things. Terrible oversight on their part. I think I want to put this little display over here. There is a switch here for the navigation lights, but I think I'm going to move that over to this side of the panel and put in more of a little fuse panel for all of my electrical. Okay, we've got our bracket installed. I did have to shorten it a little bit so it would clear the windshield. Now we can pull up the chart plotter and see where we're at. Maybe a GPS mapping system on a boat this size is ridiculous, but hey, whatever. I like gadgets. This particular map is called Open CPN. I like this one for its Mississippi River charts. I can also use other mapping applications like Backcountry Navigator. That's a good one. And it also lets me see how fast we're going with this stat screen. There's also this app called i-boating and it shows uh, Midwestern lakes with the depth contours. So that's kind of handy as well. All right, this is definitely the real reason why I installed that tablet. So I can sit out here in the boat and watch boating videos and pretend to be boating. Well, I bid on some stuff at an estate auction and I've got two more outboards. So I've got this little Johnson 5 horse, which needs to be tested. And then I've got this little electric outboard or trolling motor. So I'm pretty sure this will work. I'm going to hook it up and test it real quick. So that will be a backup to my backup in case anything happens to the other two engines. So let's get this awful thing back to the lake again and see if it will stay in forward gear. All right, we're gonna go over to the smaller lake. Well, bigger than this, but smaller than the main one. So hopefully less traffic to dodge around and run into.
just popped out of gear again. And we're still having trouble keeping it in forward gear, and it's running really rough, but we did get a little faster for a moment there, so we're gonna try that again. Or not. Okay, so we currently do not have forward or reverse gear, so things have gotten worse. It's a good thing we brought two backup outboards. All right, we got backup engine number one running now. I can't tell if this one smokes more or less than the other one. Such peace and quiet. Okay, the forecast for the rest of this week is just constant rain, so I'm not gonna get this out to test again, so I'm gonna wrap up this video. But really quick, I wanna show you what went wrong this last time. So you might recall that I had a lot of trouble driving that pin out of the propeller. And that is supposed to be a shear pin, so theoretically this thing is supposed to be strong enough to hold the propeller on, but not strong enough that it holds the propeller on if you hit a rock. So the idea is that if you hit a rock or a log or something, this is supposed to break and save your propeller from breaking. Now the one that was in there just bent somehow, and it was really wedged in there. I think I showed earlier that I destroyed two old screwdrivers trying to pound that out. So that was pretty terrible. Now I had some of these pins, which are the right size, and looked like they would be correct for the boat, but apparently they are not very strong. So these ones just sheared off under normal use. So that's garbage. Fortunately, I ordered some real ones. These are the original, supposedly, Evinrude branded shear pins from eBay. I don't know how old they are, but uh, they look a little nicer than this old one. This one looks like it's made out of lead. These at least look like they're made out of a real metal. So hopefully these have the correct tolerance to hold that propeller on under normal engine operations, but still break if I hit something, unlike this old one that just bent. But we'll have to wait until the next video to see if this boat runs any better. So until then, uh, check out my other videos on the progress of rebuilding this free speed boat, and go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.